Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to Pentecost Sunday. It's the church's birthday, which makes it a very significant day in human history. Most of the world will let it pass by, but we're not going to do that this morning. We worship God, and we're going to give Him all our attention this morning as we reflect on the great things He's done. Well, it's great to have you on board here for St Luke's Online again. Uh, My name is Owen Proud. I'm the Senior Minister here, and my prayer is that you'll experience the presence of Jesus this morning. You'll notice that I've even put a jacket on for today. Uh, That's because this is a celebration, the birthday of the church. I hope that you too can celebrate with me this fantastic day. So let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we we worship and honour you on this holy day. We thank you that you died for us, that you rose again, that you ascended to the right hand of the Father, and that you gave us the gift of your Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Help us today to worship and honour you and to experience that overwhelming sense of joy as we acknowledge that you are our Saviour and God. Well, this morning Stephen joins me as we worship in song. We're going to sing together, Blessed Be Your Name. So if you've got your words there, grab them out and sing along with us. streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place though i walk through the wilderness blessed be your name every blessing Pour out, I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glory Blessed be your name When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be. Blessed be your name. 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 Blessed
your glorious name. All right, just a couple of notices for you. Uh, I'm hoping that if you remember here at St. Luke's that you will have received my email. Uh, For those of you who haven't given me your email address, please do if you can, because it's a great way for me to keep you updated with what's happening. Uh, Particularly with the easing of restrictions, I'm working with the wardens and the parish council, uh, and we're just trying to work through a pathway back to -to face-to-face worship. It's coming soon, but it will obviously look pretty different. Uh, I hope you've had the chance to, to read my email. Uh, and we'll have a chat about it today after church. I invite you to our Zoom morning tea. And uh, I'm just trying to gauge a bit of a feeling about where people are at regarding this issue. So uh, we'll join each other today for our Zoom morning tea and have a bit of a a chat about that. Uh, All throughout June, uh, we're going to definitely be be continuing our online service presence. So look out for a real emphasis on mission. This month, we are very blessed to have five different people uh, from four different mission agencies sharing with us. Uh, Next week, we'll have Glenda Diaga, one of our very own, and she will be speaking to us uh, from Scripture and about Mukti Mission. We'll have Lindsay Tunbridge from Youth Dimension. We've got Chris and Jodie McCartney from Second Chance Bangkok, and then Stephen Andrews from Pioneers. So these are uh, the people that will be sharing with us online about Uh, their experiences of mission. So please, it's going to be a special time, don't miss out. Uh, Lastly, I just wanted to let you know that Saturday morning prayer will be happening face-to-face this coming week. Um, It'll be on from 8am till 10am and if you're able to come even for part of it, uh, please let me know. I I do need you to, if you can, indicate this to me beforehand because we do have certain protocols that we've got to follow there. Obviously, if you're showing any signs of being unwell, please stay home. Uh, but if you can come, please do, and, uh, and we'll have a great time of social distancing prayer together. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to hand over now to Jenny, who will lead us. Jenny Park, who's going to lead us in a word of prayer. Thanks so much, Jenny. Good morning, everyone. This is really special to be leading you in prayers this morning. This online service over the last few weeks has become really important to me. Although we're not together, I take great comfort that so many of you are watching this service from your home and that, in a sense, we can still gather as a church to worship and call on our God. I'm just going to read to you from Matthew 11. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. As we pray now, let's take seriously that invitation that Jesus spoke for us. Let's lay down our burdens before him and seek his rest. Let's pray. Lord God, we are sorry when we hold on to our worries. You call us to walk with you and to work with you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for your mercy and forgiveness. Help us to recognise that we can keep company with you in everything we do. Help us to learn your unforced rhythms of grace. Currently we're living differently and working differently. Help us, Lord, to work with the new challenges. Help us to relate well to our families and our friends. We ask for fresh ideas and much patience. Please give us wisdom in all our decisions. Thank you for the country we live in, for our homes 
and for the many options we have. Guide our leaders in all their decisions. Help them to get through this pandemic. We pray for Prime Minister Scott Morrison and for all the state leaders that they may be strengthened in all that they do. We pray for the Chief Medical Officer, Brendan Murphy, that you would give him wisdom in his advisory role. We pray that the coronavirus would be controlled throughout the world and that a vaccine would be found. Lord, we have many concerns regarding the future of our country and for the future of our world. In this silence, we bring these concerns to you. Lord, we pray for all medical staff, for strength to do their jobs and that they keep good health. We particularly pray for those in leadership roles, give them the ability to make good decisions and to look after their staff as well as the patients. We think of teachers returning to the physical classroom. They are dealing with so many changes and challenges. We pray for endurance and patience as they navigate the next few weeks with students returning. We pray for resilience for all students. We pray for families for understanding and patience. Help parents to know how to deal with the home life that has become so different. We ask, Lord, that you would help us as a church Help us to know how we should go in the next few months. We particularly ask that you guide Owen and Caleb as they continue to run online services. And we pray for Parish Council for the wisdom to know what changes can be made as restrictions ease. Help us, Lord, to look beyond ourselves to others. In the silence now, we pray for those we know are in need of your help. Thank you, Lord, that we can give you all our burdens. Thank you that you hear all our prayers and the groans of our hearts. We know you are always with us and that we can trust in you. Amen. Linda Prout is now going to bring us the Bible reading. So over to you, Linda. Thank you. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 47. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. 
fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptised and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. Well, here we are, folks. We've arrived at Pentecost Sunday, the last day of the Easter season on the traditional Christian calendar. It's the birthday of the Christian church, as I mentioned before. And that's why during the week, if you're a member of St. Luke's, you will have received an email, some communication from me, reminding you about this important day. To celebrate it in your home somehow, to mark the occasion with a, fe a feast, perhaps. Uh, whatever it might be, it's an important day for us to remember. So today I want to briefly look at what happened that day, what's important to remember about this event for the church and what it can mean for us in the 21st century. So firstly, let's look at what happened. Well, sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking that the early church looked kind of the same as, as we do church now. Well, whilst there might be some sort of vague similarity somehow, essentially the church was just a gathering of Jews. This was certainly the case at Pentecost. The apostles had all gathered together for the Jewish feast called Shavuot. This is the Feast of Weeks in Palestine, uh, where there were there are two harvest festivals each year. This was one of those festivals. The early harvest came during the months of May and June, and the final harvest came in their autumn. Well, Pentecost was the, the one uh, celebrating the, the very beginning of, of the early wheat harvest. So that basically meant it fell in the middle of May somewhere or sometimes early June, where we find ourselves right now. So we see, we read here in Scripture in verse 5 that there were many God-fearing Jews staying in Jerusalem for this festival from all over the Mediterranean world. When the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles as they were gathered together, a crowd of these people, these Jews formed and miraculously they could all understand what was being said in their own language and they saw tongues of fire resting on each of the believers. It was a pretty bewildering situation but they could barely really even make out what was going on. What was their response to it? Well you see there in the verses they thought their conclusion was that these people are drunk In the next part of the chapter uh, that, that Linda read out to us today, Peter, he got up at that point and he addressed the crowd and he, he told them firstly that they hadn't been drinking. No, we, we haven't uh, 
got on the grog early in the morning. Rather, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and at that point, he gives them a brief rundown about Jesus' credentials, his miracles, his death and resurrection, and the fact that they, the, the apostles, were witnesses to it all. He affirms that Jesus is the living God and that this day was special because they could receive the living God into their own lives through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, what happens next? 3,000 people that day turned to Christ. They received the Holy Spirit and the church and Jesus' mission for the world was born. And then in verses 41 to 47, we see the early signs of the impact that Jesus had as they went about transforming the world around them. So that's a really brief explanation about what happened. Secondly, what is is important to remember about this event for the church? What's, What's the big idea here? Well, here it is. The advocate promised by Christ enters the the believing community to guide and protect it until the second coming. The advocate promised by Christ enters the believing community to guide and protect it until the second coming. If we have a look at verses 42 to 47, we might just get the idea that it was just a breeze in those early stages of the church. Selling property, sharing stuff, breaking bread together. Now there's no doubt that that it would have been exciting times, wouldn't it? But we do know also from scripture that it wasn't always an easy road. We know that the church was a community struggling to come up with answers to the problems it faced. Who should be admitted to the believing community? Should we obey the purity and food laws of the Jewish law? What roles and rights and duties should church officials exercise? Some of these issues have continued on right throughout the church's existence. This was a community struggling to organise itself in the best possible and most inclusive way. It was only with the belief that its members were acting with some guidance and grace from God in the person of the Holy Spirit that the church had the confidence to make the necessary decisions to develop itself. So let me extend on that big idea. From that very first Pentecost until now, it's always been the belief of the church that the Holy Spirit directs and guides us collectively and individually. God is not a distant being, and the ascended Jesus, the Jesus that we looked at looked uh, and talked about last week, has not abandoned us. We have the Spirit of God living and working in our lives and in our church. This is a magnificent idea. Better than that, it's a wondrous truth. So thirdly, how does the truth of God's Spirit living in us Help us in meaningful ways today as 21st century believers. Well, the easy answer to that is found right here in Acts 2. We have access to the power and mission of Jesus Christ in the very same way that the early church did. We're not bound by simply a human point of view about what's happening around us. We acknowledge that Jesus' Spirit is our first port of call when we face something in our lives as individuals and as a church. Having the Spirit lead us gives us the confidence that we need to move forward. Okay, so that sounds all very theoretical. So what am I trying to say? Well, I've heard other people's testimony about the Spirit moving in their life. And I can only, I guess, share with you my experiences where things have happened in my life and this is what sometimes happens for me I'll pray about something I'll listen to other people's ideas I'll talk to well-informed people but in the end I've had times where I have felt something happen inside my heart inside my mind that goes in a direction that that goes beyond expectation have you ever had an experience like that where it, there is no kind of reasonable explanation. Well, I had it clearly before we made the decision to move up here and to lead this church. It didn't make sense on many levels at all, really. We were very settled where we were. Our kids were settled in their schools and, and I, I loved my work 
with youth dimension. I loved my colleagues and our family had been living on, on faith support for 12 years and in that time we were never underpaid. We never had a lack of finance. There were many times that we were on our knees because it was looking bad but Jesus kept our needs supplied the whole time, sometimes coming through at the last minute. We had fabulous family support. It was all so good, really. On paper, it was nuts to move. But Jesus' spirit moved in my heart and separately in Linda's. And we knew with utter confidence that we were being led up here. It's that confidence that Jesus gives us through his spirit that's such an overwhelming blessing in our lives. Some people have a, a very outward, tangible experience of the Spirit. Others have a reassurance within that they know that's God interacting with them in, in some sort of supernatural way. The Bible never prescribes exactly how you're meant to experience God, but we have overwhelming evidence. Just take a look at the Psalms if you, if you want to flick through and, and have a look there. We've got overwhelming evidence that our lives with God are meant to be an experience. We feel things at a different level, at another level, because he walks with us. We have a confidence to move forward because we know that he is with us all the time. It's God who strengthens us by his spirit. It's God who strengthens us to face the difficult challenges of life. My question to all of us this morning, are we experiencing Jesus in our lives' journeys, our life's journey? Are things a bit dry and theoretical in your faith? I want to encourage you to reach out to him again and ask him into those parts of your lives that, that need a special touch from Jesus right now. I'd love to talk to you about these things, the, the experiences that you've had in your walk with Jesus. But more importantly, share them with each other as we do life together. As a church, we need to be reminded that our confidence is in Jesus, who left us with his spirit to guide us on our way. So as you reflect on, on the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and in our church and in our community, let's conclude our service with a benediction uh, song. Now the song is, uh, And That My Soul Knows Very Well. Let's sing together. You make your face to shine on me And that my soul knows very well cleansed and free and that my soul knows very well when mountains fall I'll stand by the power of your hand and in your heart hearts I'll dwell and that my soul knows very well That my soul knows very well Forgiveness, hope, I know is mine And that my soul knows very well When mountains fall, I'll stand By the power of your hand And in your heart I'll dwell and that my soul knows very well when mountains fall I'll stand by the power of your hand and in your heart hearts I'll dwell and that my soul
that my soul knows very well. And in your heart, hearts I'll dwell. And that my soul knows very well. And let us pray to conclude our service. May the Lord richly bless you and your family as you venture out into a new week. May you know and feel his presence with you in these unpredictable times. And may you experience the overwhelming sense of his loving arms around you. In Jesus' name, Amen. We'll see you next week.